Hello and welcome back for another Sheriff of Sodium video. Should all residents publish research? This video was inspired a couple days ago when I went to Google Scholar to, um, to look for a particular paper. And um, on the home screen, uh, Google Scholar helpfully suggested some papers that, um, that they thought I might enjoy. And I got to say, I mean, sometimes um, Google Scholar, they're, they're on point with the recommendations they provide to me. But um, in this particular instance, they were not. They highlighted this paper. Performing research and publishing in the peer-reviewed medical literature should be a requirement for completion of postgraduate residency and fellowship training. And I saw that and I thought, that's about the worst idea I've heard in a while. And if you agree with me, then feel free to save yourself five or six minutes and just skip this video. But, but if you think this is an appealing idea, then, um, then, then please, I invite you to listen on. Um, and I guess before telling you why, I guess we should start with what the authors say. And so I'm, I'm just gonna make an extended quote here from the abstract. We'll begin right here. Since future attending physicians are expected to be experts in their field, able to digest relevant medical knowledge, critically evaluate emerging findings in the literature, and lead multi-professional healthcare teams, they must have a level of facility with the medical literature that can only be acquired by having performed research and having published papers themselves. Publishing one paper during training is easily attainable for all trainees. Having this be an ACGME requirement will necessitate protected time, research methods, education, and mentorship for all trainees. This can be accomplished without disrupting other elements of resident and fellow training. From an ACGME perspective, required scholarly activity will support the competencies of practice-based learning and improvement, as well as professionalism. In lay terms, benefits will be a higher level of education and attainment for trainees, and a potentially higher standard of health care for our patients. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, I'll presume that if you're still watching this video that you need to be convinced that it's not. And before I start on that and, and end up in what may become sort of an extended YouTube rant here, let me be clear about what I'm objecting to. I got no beef with medical research. I benefit from the, the labor of researchers every day that I'm in clinic and so do patients. There's nothing wrong with medical research. I've got no beef with incorporating scholarly activity into residency training. There are many programs that already require research projects for their residents or fellows to graduate, um, or, or even programs that require extended years. I mean, general surgery programs, I'm looking at you. Um, and I've got no beef with that. If, if, if you know what you're getting into and you think that kind of program is for you, or if you're in a program official and you think that's the way that things need to be done with the infrastructure you have, I've got no beef with any of that. But that's not what's being proposed, which is that all residents and fellows should, as a condition of finishing the program, publish a paper in the peer-reviewed literature. Really? So if this sounds like a good idea to you, if you think research is so good that, that more of it must be better, then I invite you to, to think this little proposal through. I'm serious. Just just hit the pause button down there and just think this through for just a minute. What would happen if the ACGME really were persuaded to, to implement this proposal? Go ahead and hit pause and think about it. I mean, ask yourself, do you really think, do you really think that Homo sapiens as a species are going to be better off if we have every resident publish a paper? Or do you think it's more likely that we're going to end up with more low quality, irredeemably biased, non-reproducible, or outright fraudulent, peer-reviewed PubMed pollution? I mean, what do you think is going to happen when resident physicians are looking down the barrel of an interminable residency, 80-hour work week after 80-hour work week, until they publish their peer-reviewed journal article? Do you think that's the magic vapor that's going to fill them with scientific inspiration? Or do you think it's going to reduce them to writing up the least publishable unit that will barely pass muster at some greetings of the day, pay to play journal? I mean, if you really care about science, if you really care about the literature, I don't know why you'd want to befoul it with any more of this type of stuff than, than it already is. <sighs> you know, I've pointed out all this kind of stuff before, not exactly in this context, but um, I have been a critic of what I call the research arms race and residency selection. You probably know what I'm talking about. It's that to enter certain highly competitive fields or prestigious programs, applicants are expected to have produced an increasing number of, shall we say, 
contributions to the scientific literature. And um, I'm not going to discuss all that here, but I will link to my article in the show notes if you're interested. Um, suffice to say, when I talk about this, it rubs certain people the wrong way. These people seem to believe that research is an unblemished good, and so compelling trainees to do more and more and more of it, well, that must make things even better, right? And I'll note that many of the people who espouse such a position, well, they gain personally when trainees do produce more and more research. But that's not a reason that you can publicly say to argue in favor of these kinds of policies or trends. And instead, you get back these more polite rebuttals. And, um, and I'd like to go through some of the common ones that I hear um, as they apply to this particular proposal. They may say things like, but, but, but you never know who will make the next great scientific discovery. I mean, this is why we got to push people into research, right? Because you never know who will be the next Jonas Salk or Frederick Banting. And um, I suppose that's true. But um, remind me again, who was the last Nobel Prize winner whose ideas were spawned by their mandatory residency research project instead of their passion for science or innate curiosity? R remind me who that was, because I... I I just keep forgetting. I, I actually am surprised that this counterargument gets as much play as it seems to sometimes because, um, you know, there's something about it that almost seems disrespectful to me. It makes it sound like finding discoveries is, is easy. And uh, look, folks, um, if you haven't noticed, the um, watch an apple fall out of a tree and discover gravity era of science is over. Um, the people who are actually making medical science discoveries that matter, they're, um, they're running highly sophisticated, highly technical um, enterprises. They're not doing it in the afternoon after resident clinic. Or they may cite their own personal story and say, but, but, but I'd have never become a successful investigator if someone hadn't initially forced me to do research. I never really wanted to do science until someone made me. And look at me now, sitting atop a veritable heap of NIH funding, the king of my own domain. And if that's true, um, I'd say congratulations on being the exception to the rule. But we got to make policies based on the rule. And I think when the average doctor in training says, I know I don't want to do research. I'm here to take care of the patients. That's what I love doing. That's what I want to do. I think most people have a high positive predictive value with that. And here again, let me emphasize, I'm not anti-research. All of you who spend your careers devoted to the pursuit of scientific questions, look, I have the utmost respect for you. I'm just saying it's not a job for everybody any more than, than my job is. Um, but we, we don't compel people to do a year of nephrology fellowship just because for some people it might convince them that's the job for them. The question is where to draw the line. Giving people exposure to research giving people um, the opportunity to work with good mentors, those are good things. Asking people as a condition of their graduation to publish a peer-reviewed journal paper, that's, that's a step too far. Next up, but, but, but all physicians should know how to interpret research. I agree. I think any reasonable person would. Where I disagree is with the associated and underlying premise that you can only interpret research properly if you personally have participated in doing some of it. I think if we're talking about clinical research, not bench research, which to be honest is the type of research that we really want physicians to be able to interpret appropriately, well then I think that assertion is provably false. If what you really care about is research appraisal, then publishing your own paper is a pretty inefficient way to do it. If you really care about helping clinicians critically appraise research, then you're probably going to get farther by requiring some epidemiology or biostatistics coursework than you are by compelling every single trainee to engage in their own personal p-hacking chart review. Last, but, but, but doing research improves patient care. And this one, just like so many of the others that we've already discussed, is really just an attempt to move the goalposts and change the conversation into a debate about whether research is good or not, because that's actually a position that you can defend rather than the silly proposals that often generate these kind of discussions. So I think it's fair to acknowledge that the point here is true. Research does improve patient care. But put that in the context of the proposal that we're discussing. I mean, let's use some real numbers. Last year, around 35,000 residents began their residency training. 
So suppose that every single one of them is now compelled to publish a single peer-reviewed paper. How many of those papers are going to make a meaningful contribution to science and patient care? It's certainly not all of them, but many of them will. But a better question is, among the papers that do make a meaningful contribution to science, how many of those would have been written in the absence of any mandate to write them? And here my guess is that almost all of them would be. I think that residents who have some interest in doing research, who do their training at, at institutions where uh, they have good mentorship and resources, I think they'll do that work whether you force them to write a peer-reviewed paper or not. But if you disagree with that and you say, oh no, we need to make people do research because otherwise we wouldn't get most of the good papers that are going to help patients, well then it's incumbent upon you to analyze the trade-offs. So what are you going to cut from residency training to make room for this new requirement? And how is that going to impact patient care? Look, if this proposal were implemented, the main beneficiary won't be patient care or science. The main beneficiary would be senior academics and borderline journals. Honestly, a 10-minute YouTube video is more consideration than this silly idea even deserves. And so in closing, I'm going to leave you with these wise words from the BMJ that were published nearly 30 years ago. As the system encourages poor research, it is the system that should be changed. We need less research, better research, and research done for the right reasons. Abandoning using the number of publications as a measure of ability would be a start. And folks, that's all I've got. Thanks for listening.